2023 was a roller coaster of a year for me. In January, I got to watch my favorite team win a playoff game live. I was there. I had great seats for the single best game in franchise history. And then in February, our company and our community was rocked by a scandal that hurt a lot of people I care about and threatened to tear us apart. In March, we got back to doing live shows for the first time in what seemed like forever. And then a week later, I lost a fur baby that I'd had for 15 years. Nothing typifies the year for me more than the fact that I had a heart attack on October 31st. And then a few days later, our charity drive crossed over the million dollar mark and lifetime funds raised. In other words, my year was filled with exactly the kind of moments people say that you need gods for. In fact, when I look back over the list of major personal events for the year, it reads like I was trying to complete the fucking set by year's end. And of course, the common thread between all of those things is the loss of control, right? They're all situations where something beyond my control was intruding on my life and my well-being and the well-being of the people I loved was threatened. And those are exactly the times when a little imaginary magic comes in handy, right? Aren't those exactly the moments when it helps to have convinced yourself in defiance of all logic and personal experience that an all-powerful being loves and cares about you and could intervene on your behalf? That's certainly what religions hope for. Those are the situations where they love to swoop on in and offer you their ersatz elixirs, a charm that'll help Riley Patterson make the game-winning kick, a heaven that'll make room for my cat, a miracle that'll strengthen my heart. All I have to do is hand over a small sliver of my logical mind, and maybe a few of my moral values, maybe a little bit of my money, and in exchange, I get to delude myself into pretend control like a child too young to realize the controller he's holding isn't the one Mario's responding to. Wouldn't that be nice? I mean, it's their go-to argument, isn't it? Or I I guess argument is too strong a term, right? Because when I encounter it, it's less often as an argument and more often as a dismissal. Sure, I can afford to be an atheist because my life is going good. I'm riding high, but soon God will bring me low and reveal himself to me. And then I'll regret all those sinful ways of my past. I can be an atheist when I'm just arguing with somebody on the internet and everything's fine, but wait until I'm out of control. Wait until my world is turned upside down or I'm grieving or I'm afraid. Then I'll come around to believing in a theological security blanket. The same one that the person arguing with me believes in, as it turns out, universally. And unlike most of the arguments religious apologists present, this isn't one you can easily dismiss. Most of their arguments try to prove God exists, and he doesn't, right? So those arguments are invariably stupid. But this is a different argument altogether. This is one of those, but even if he didn't exist, aren't you better off believing that he did style arguments? Am I made stronger through self-delusion? And as much as my intuition tells me no, You can at least imagine a plausible mechanism where that's true, right? When I'm going through a really tough time and there's nothing I can do to change it, the very fact that there's nothing I can do makes it so much worse. The very act of doing nothing is often more than you can bear to do. So maybe there is some value in picking up that controller and tricking yourself into believing that you will hit left before Mario turned around. A lot of people seem to think so, and I'm not just talking about religious people who are so very clearly trying to look away from the glaring holes in their worldview. A lot of atheists defend religion on these same grounds, arguing that it makes people stronger or that it helps them through these out-of-control moments. But after a year that was just laden with them, I have to say, I feel like I'm stronger without a God. I mean, maybe I wasn't stronger in those moments, but I'm stronger for the next ones. I'm more experienced in the art of being out of control, and therefore I'm more callous to it. I went down that hill already, and the fact that I didn't have training wheels on when I did so gives me confidence the next time the horizon falls away before me. Because look, sometimes life really is just riding that roller coaster. You're in the car, but you're not in control, and no amount of self-deception is going to change that. So the best you can do is control what you can, mitigate what you can, and ensure against what you can. But when you can't do any of that shit, all you have left is to keep your hands and feet inside the car and hold on to the bar. And there's a very real strength in knowing that. <laughs>